right, welcome back. Chart of the day is Taiwan Semi. That after winning that $6.6 billion grant from the U.S. government, the CHIPS Act, for its Arizona factory. So there's the stock today. Good for about 1.5%, Weiss. What do you make of this news? What do you think it means for the stock longer term? For long term, it's great. I mean, if you take a look at Taiwan Semi, it's one of the cheapest semi stocks out there. It's, about, it's less than a market multiple this year and about three-quarters of market multiple for next year. Compared to Broadcom, for example, great company. But after this year, the bounce back in revenues for Broadcom, it's got single-digit revenue growth and earnings growth versus this company, which has mid-20s, EBITDA growth, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the reasons is, obviously, it's in Taiwan. The other reason being that it's capital intensive, the business they're in, because they're, they're a foundry. But nonetheless, the growth is the growth. So I think the stock is way undervalued here. Okay. Applied Materials, it's AMAT upgraded to overweight at Cantor today. The price target, 260 that from 220, they talk about secular tailwinds from AI and a cyclical recovery. Jimmy, you own that name specifically, along with uh, NXP and NVIDIA, as we know. But give me something on AMAT. I, I will. Um, you know, it's not just a cyclical play here. It's more of a secular play. We just were mentioning the CHIPS Act. And the basic fact is that semiconductor plants are being built all over this country. There's news in the last couple of days that Samsung is going to increase its capital expenditure spend in Taylor, Texas, outside of Austin, from $17 billion to $44 billion. That's an incremental 26 Seven billion that they're spending on new chip plants. You know what needs to go in there? Capital uh, equipment for semiconductors. That includes applied materials equipment. It includes ASML lithography equipment. Um, but the basic fact is there is a secular trend here towards building more semiconductor plants, which applies positively to AMAT and ASML. All right. So KeyBank is out with some uh, price target increases today and a downgrade. So they take NVIDIA to 1200 They take Qualcomm to 205 They take Micron to 150 they do downgrade Skyworks, though, um, and that's from overweight to sector weight. Now, Jenny, mm -hmm. which you own this stock, which I'm like, okay, so you own Skyworks, but you won't earn, uh, you won't own Apple. Skyworks, a lot of the chips have done amazingly well. Skyworks has not, maybe because Apple hasn't, and it's a, it's a supplier. So Skyworks is down seven percent on the year. I want to know why you own it if you're so against owning Apple. So it's just different, right? So what Skyworks does is they make chips that enable communications like Wi-Fi, satellite, network radio. And what I think is interesting about what Jim said, Steve said, and this down or in this this report where some are upgraded, some are downgraded is each of these semi companies has very unique characteristics and they're unique within like the secular themes and they're unique within the cyclical themes. And so what what, um, sorry, KeyBank is saying, is they're saying the reason that we're downgrading Skyworks is because it's going to be difficult to grow now as smartphone growth matures. But what do we know? We know that regardless of whether their smart, smartphone growth matures or not, all we're doing is consuming more and more and more. And so as that happens, there's perpetual demand for what Skyworks does. We think, and this is where we disagree, we think that it's not a smartphone growth maturity thing, it's just a cyclical impact to Skyworks, and that's why they were down. Because if you look at their earnings, their earnings are down okay. like 19% this so year. So isn't, me isn't Apple and a slowdown in its own smartphone sales just a cyclical event as well? Yes, but if you think about it, as new smartphones are made, more and more of Skyworks chips need to go on them. So even though- And Apple ones too, though. Apple ones, everyone. So even if you're buying just like, even if your upgrade cycle on a new phone has slowed, the next phone you buy is likely to have way more chips. The next computer you buy is going to have way more of Skyworks chips. So what we saw following the pandemic was a huge pull forward, mm -hmm. right? Then there was all this inventory distortion. We think that Skyworks is just about to come out of that. And so if you look at them, and this goes into why do you own it versus others, you know in our discipline growth strategy, which is where this is, we have a 5% or better free cash flow yield to get into the portfolio. This has a 9% free cash flow yield on it. It's minting cash. This is the one that's trading at 14 times earnings. And if you look at their earnings, they're down 19% this year, but the next year they're expected to grow by 18% and then about 19% the following year. So as we all know with cyclicals, you need to be early because the thing changes fast and furious. So I think there's a slight disconnection from as simple as I don't like Apple. I don't like Apple not for the company, but I don't like Apple, which has been true all along because of that valuation, right? I have said their earnings are growing mid single digits. The multiple is 23 times. The multiple is 12. Well, the is multiple, times. but you can't. But that's but the what I've all complained along about. Point that you're making. Apple's valuation hasn't always been 
As long times. as I've disliked Apple. It's been a lot cheaper, especially as, it's been half that okay. when you back out the cash. But as long as I've been complaining about Apple since I've been on this show, and as long as I've been saying Apple should be dead money, my argument has not been against the company whatsoever. My, my argument's been on valuation, where I've said their earnings are growing, mid single digits, the multiple is a premium to the market. That math doesn't work for me. So what's the difference with Skyworks? 14 times earnings. Once we get past this year, 18% earnings growth, 19% earnings growth, and minting cash. The valuation is different. It's not just a story that I'm telling. It's a valuation difference. All right.